Welcome aboard for week number 115. This is Michael Laughlin. The Irish Roots Cafe mobile unit is our home this week, and it's our very last day at the National Archives. Sweeney park the van, Katie strike up the band, Molly try out those gillies. Coming to you from irishroots.com, be sure to check out our music, video, and history podcast too. And be sure to read our blog for show notes and for web links. Here are some of today's special interviews at the National Archives Family History Fair. Hey, we've got an interview with the Iowa Genealogical Society, and that's a good one. Lots of folks with the people passing in and out of Iowa, and the African American Genealogical Society, and the Overland Park Society, uh, Missouri Valley Special Collections, Johnson County Genealogy, uh, Olathe Public Library, and Kimberly Reed, who helped us uh, set this whole thing up and uh, let us get out of the cafe for a couple of days. And we'll be heading back in about uh, four hours and just really wanting to get back into the uh, get into the swing of things at the cafe. And we'll return to our old format then. But uh, today we're just going to have some really good interviews to show you what these family history fairs might be like. So uh, I think it's time to get with it now. Let's uh, listen in. Well, we're here at the second day at the uh, National Archives, Kansas City, and uh, I've met some very interesting people, and I was walking down here. The first one I met that I wanted to interview was Teresa Lewer. 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 Uh, you got to be careful with those last names. We all know that. that. That's right. Especially when an Irishman's talking to a German. My grandmother was German, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, came from the Black Forest. But now, could you tell us a little bit about what you do and uh, why you're here and uh, if you've got any special connections to Irish genealogy? Um, I'm actually here on behalf of the Iowa Genealogical Society. We like to come down to Missouri because we always figure half the people from Missouri have Iowa connections and the other half from Iowa have Missouri connections. So we're out here kind of talking to people about that. And one of the things we always talk about is our special interest groups. We have uh, groups that meet once a month and we have a Norwegian, an African American, a German, and an Irish interest group, which I am the facilitator of. So although I have a German name, I am Irish. Well, well now, now, would the Irish be the biggest or the smallest or how does that work out? Actually, it's the second largest. German is the largest, which in Iowa would be expected because that is the largest ethnic background. Right. Well, that's interesting. Now, now, what do you do with an Irish interest group? Mostly we cry, but that's okay. <laughs> would you be singing too, crying and singing? Uh, you should see us on St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> but no, we get together and we talk about uh, Irish, uh, Irish sources, whether online or new books that we've, we've added to our library. The Iowa Genealogical Society has a, a whole group of books for the library on Ireland uh, online. We help each other out. You know, when somebody has a brick wall, we have connections and what can we do and, and did you try this and did you try that? And it works out pretty well. Now, what uh, uh, folks, of course, we know they moved into Iowa. Now, if they left Iowa, where did most of them leave Iowa? Where did they go if they left? We always laugh. They went to California. There used to be an Iowa picnic there every year, but they actually went just about anywhere west of Iowa that you can find. So there's really a lot of people that could uh, uh, benefit by, from contacting you or being in contact with you, even though they're not living in Iowa today. Their ancestors sure could have come from Iowa. Very much so. And we have we actually we, we have volunteers that do research for small fees as we go through there. We always tell people that one of the things we have is a marvelous census. If your family was there in 1925, the state of Iowa took a census, and in it they asked, what is your father's name and what is your mother's name and where were they married? And it's just wonderful. So that kind of information that's available starting in 1880, the, uh, the marriage records ask for parents' names. So that also is a great clue as we go through here. Now, what if you, you just came over, just, just settled after the famine, say it's 1860, uh, anything there, that records there? Yeah, there'll be birth, death, and marriage records. There'll be church records. We have cemetery records. We have land records. Um, 
we we have we have 83 local chapters. The Iowa Genealogical Society is kind of the umbrella, but almost every county has one, and they're out there. I always laugh. They're the ones that know where the bodies are buried. So they're out there making copies of just about anything they can get. They're indexing and and doing photocopies. I always our Madison County group. We all know the British is Madison County. Uh, they have photographed every tombstone in their county. There are 30, something like 35,000 pictures of tombstones on that county, one of which the cemetery is the Irish Settlement. Ooh, the Irish, and that's where? It's in Madison County, as in the bridges of Madison County. Oh, this, I, you know, I, I see a story in this, the Irish Settlement in Madison County. I know there's Irish settlements in Kansas City, in St. Louis, the Cary Patch, the Irish Patch, Connaught Town, the Irish, you remember any names that were connected to that settlement? Oh, it's, it's, one of them I love is Lestrange, which is a Irish name, but it's a French, it's a French derivative, right. but no, it's, it's just 100% Irish, the Cunninghams, the Connors, the Browns, uh, the whole, and it's called the Irish Settlement, they have a little church called St. Patrick's, and that's what, you know, we go in there and go that. We also have other Irish uh, communities. We have Emmitsburg. We have Melrose. Uh, uh, Lizard, I always like Lizard Creek. Uh, but there are quite a few Irish, you know, very, very close-knit Irish communities out there, outside, uh, all over Iowa. Did, uh, did a lot of people, I know one, of, one side of my family is the O'Laughlins. They were in Des Moines and Burlington and... Uh, Seems like they sort of followed the railroad in, or they got there just ahead of them and bought some land or worked on the rails. Is that common? Very common. You know, somebody once said you needed three things to build a railroad. It was a pick, a hammer, or a pick, a shovel, and an Irishman. So, uh, so yeah, we, we have an awful lot of them. In fact, that's how my family came through Iowa, didn't stay, but they were building railroads up in the eastern part of Iowa as we go through. They were from, from uh, Tipperary and came on. Well, now, uh, if somebody's listening to this and they're saying, boy, I'd like to find out more, what's the uh, direct route either on the web or by mail? Who, should, who and how should they contact? Um, the Iowa Genealogical Society has a website called iowagenealogy.org, and so they can do that. If they wish to write us, if they don't do the web, which most people do anymore, but the address is 628 East Grand Avenue, Des Moines, Iowa, 50309. We, are, we have a wonderful library and right across the street from the State Historical Library, so you can kind of hit two birds with one stone if you come in to see us, too. Boy, that's great. Uh, 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 what other kinds of uh, uh, things have you gotten into with the Irish there? Any other special events? Oh, we try to bring a speaker in once every year or two. So last two years ago, we had the, what we call the Boys for Belfast. The two gentlemen from the Ulster Historical Foundation came in, Brian Trainer and uh, I can't remember the other gentleman. And so we're looking for another speaker. So we'll have a conference. Uh, we'll have a conference coming through. And then we always, and then the state, uh, we have a, a state conference that in the fall as well. And generally, there'll be somebody that'll talk about Irish in one of the sessions. And you do have a St. Patrick's Day in Iowa. Oh, we have it. We, well, yes. Now, it may not be as big as Kansas City's. <laughs> I've been here for Kansas City's. Oh, boy. Hey, uh, <laughs> I tell you what, some of the best St. Patrick's Bays I've ever seen were the small ones that just walk around the block. Yeah. Well, this one, you know, it went on for a couple hours, and we happened to be, we had 70-degree weather this year, so it was wonderful. But we have people that come in from all over D Iowa to be in that parade, so I laugh about that when we have, you know, they, they get their float, and in they come. And which town is that in? It's in Des Moines. And Des Moines, is that sort of a hub, really, to go to in Iowa? It really is. It's the state capital. It's the largest city. So we've got, we like to think it's special. Now, now is there a Skunk River there? I remember a Skunk River. Which, which town does that run by? Skunk River goes through Ames, which is the Iowa State University. Okay, okay. I don't know why I remember that. Maybe it was just such a unique name. It floods on a regular basis, so you may have seen it in the news. <laughs> that's right. That's, well, thanks a lot. Uh, any parting comments you'd like to make? Well, I, we, you know, we were so excited to come down here, and then I was excited to see you because, you know, we always know about your books and your and your uh, your uh, podcast. So now I'm actually I can go back and tell our Irish interest group. Guess who I met in person? Well, you know, right? It's it's nice to get out of the house once in a while with all these computers. You can sit there and make books and make podcasts, and then uh, except for the people that come into the cafe on Saturday for the. Uh, uh, for the podcast and the party, and you know I can't get out too much, so it's a treat for me too. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, and I'm sure you're going to be getting some interest up there from all our listeners. They come from all across the states and, uh, well, even in foreign countries, Canada too, so I hope it stirs up some extra interest. Thank you. We hope to see them. Well, we're here at another uh, booth. We're just walking around the archives here. And, uh, gosh, there's a Mid Midwest Afro-American Genealogical Interest Coalition. So that sounds, that sounds as bad as the Irish Genealogical Foundation. And there's usually just a few people that are behind it and know what's going on. Uh, 
Preston, could you tell me what you're doing here and what, uh, what, how people might benefit? Well, we're here uh, displaying our um, publications that we have for sale for the public, uh, dealing primarily with African-American genealogy, uh, basically to spread the word, uh, to get people to investigate their, their lineage, uh, their heritage, uh, not only for themselves, but for the generations yet to come. Now, do you see, do you run into, I know I study Irish names like crazy. Everywhere I see a name, I grab it and I try to look at it. Do you run into very many names that, that like have an O in front of them, a Mac or an O? Uh, we come across that. My wife, in fact, is McCrady, is her maiden name. Uh, and in my own genealogy, I've come across an Irish name or two, particularly out of Oklahoma and in the Indian Territory. Do you think that had come from uh, uh, with the Irish and the Indians uh, intermarrying? Most assuredly, the, Gre the Graysons, which were the Grierson's, the McIntoshes, uh, quite a number of uh, Irish names uh, through Indian Territory. Have you had any luck uh, tracing that back? Oh, yeah, I'm all the way back to 1794, and that. Hey, you're you're one of the pros then. If you can break, if you can go back before 1800. Well, a lot of the work was already done for me. Where'd you find the connection with? Uh, well, the name was Hildebrand. I know uh, that's German. Yeah. Okay, it's not uh, Irish, but it is German. And the Hildebrands had a lot of extensive research already done. And I just happened to get back to a particular year. And the rest was done for me. And where'd you find it at? Uh, the archives, the National Archives, actually. That's perfect. Exactly. Yeah, and that's why I'm here, giving back. Well, now, if somebody's interested in, and they think that you might be able to help them or they might be able to help you, uh, uh, where should they go? Who should they see? Do you have any addresses? Uh, they can email me at prewas at gmail.com. Okay, great. Well, we'll have them do it, and hopefully we go all over the world and mainly uh, the U.S., Canada, Australia, so... Might make some connections, I hope. And if you do, just call me and say, I heard that Irish guy talking to you, <laughs> to you on the web. So uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Testing, one, two, three. The founder of Wait. Overland Park. The founder of Overland Park was a guy by the name of William B. Strang who was a very, very sound Irishman. He came, he was born in 1857 over in Ohio, and he got into the railroad business, and at that point he was very successful in the railroad business. When we had the 193 flood, he decided he was gonna build a flood-free community out here. He looked around for land to buy, and at that point he ended up buying 600 acres of Overland Park area land Platting six subdivision, and he started what was at the time in 1906 the first town of the 20th century, which has grown to be the second largest city in the state of Kansas. And this is Overland Park, Kansas. This is Overland Park, Kansas. That's absolutely right. Now, do you have any other uh, any other Irish connections you remember? Well, there was of course lots of Irishmen that came here, not only with Strang but moved here. This was a great place for the people that worked downtown and and uh, had jobs either downtown or, or Olathe to live. It was a quality life out here is what Strang offered and he built an inner urban to connect his community to jobs and shopping and entertainment in Kansas City and Olathe. And a ton of people came out here and enjoyed the quality of life that he offered. Hey, well, that's really interesting. Uh, uh, can you think of any other stories that might be of interest to my listeners? Uh, uh, well, there's a lot. One of the stories, I presume a lot of your listeners are, are Catholics, and, and at that point, why um, Strang wanted to get a church in Overland Park, but the bishop at the time didn't allow it. But he, Mr. Strang would ride on the Strang line to Lenexa at Holy Trinity Parish every day to go to Mass. Andy Klein, when he was growing up as a boy, would ride with her over there. He'd go to church mass, and then he'd go to school over there. I'm gone. Andy Klein had a certain amount of Irish, too, I think. 
Boy, I tell you, you, you hunt around, you can find a whole lot of it. And a lot of the workers back in the 1800s and starting in the 1900s had all those Irish surnames. Well, of course, of course the Irish were uh, came over here, obviously, uh, when they had the potato famine over there. And at that point, why... Uh, they were hard workers and were very successful people. And uh, Overland Park community offered them an opportunity to come out here and and uh, they could have their cows and chicken and, and, and have a big uh, produce garden, enjoy the good life, and at the same time, they were hard workers in Kansas City and Olathe. That's right. They could get a piece of their own land. And you are uh, Florent Wagner? Yes, sir. Uh, my name is Florent Wagner. I'm president of the Overland Park Historical Society. Boy, we sure appreciate your time today, and we'll put this on the web real soon, and I'll let you know where it uh, came out to. Is there an address we can reach you at? Yes, sir. Um, I'll just give you this car. That's got our uh, times and address for the Overland Park Historical Society. Great. Great. We'll do it, and I'll pass the word on to my listeners. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. We also have our own website and, and Internet access. Good, good. Okay, thank you very much. Hey, you want to do a little interview? Okay, I'm uh, Michael Laughlin with the Irish Roots Cafe, and I'm just going down the aisle here picking out some interesting people. And I thought you might uh, tell me, yeah, this is the Missouri Valley Special Collections at the Kansas City, Missouri Public Library. Now, I wonder if there's somebody uh, researching their family history or might want to know a little bit about their ethnic history, say the Irish, uh, what might they find there? Well, we have all kinds of materials on Kansas City uh, local history, city directories back to the very beginning, 1859, um, which are good for looking for not only individuals, but churches, um, businesses. We have telephone directories. We have yearbooks. We have newspapers from the 19th century. And of course, all kinds of books and periodicals and other things. On it's a pretty it's a pretty big room, isn't it? It is, yeah. And it's gotten bigger in the last thirty years. Yeah, definitely. I do remember that, but there is just all kinds of information. Yeah, we do have a lot. And would people just go to the uh, downtown uh, library, or is that the library? Yeah, it's the fifth floor of the of the central library at 10th and Baltimore. And you're open uh, regular hours right along with the library? We aren't open on, on Tuesday or Wednesday evening. That's the only difference. Other than that, we're open the same hours. Great. So it's really an in-depth collection on... Uh, it's not just Kansas City, is it? It's the region, the Kansas City region. Good, good. Okay, well, thank you very much. Oh, and you are uh, Mary Beverage. Mary Beverage of the of the Special Collections Organization. So good, great. Well, thank you very much, and uh, I hope we can send some people your way. Please do. Yeah. Thank you. Well, here we're we're visiting the Johnson County Library and the Johnson County Genealogical Society. And I just, I'm just popping questions as I walk down the row. Uh, now let me see. Do you, what, could you give me, introduce yourself and let me know if you have any Irish uh, family names in your line? Well, I'm Carlene Mishlish, and I'm, I'm president of the Johnson County Genealogical Society. And I do have some Agans and some Gibsons, and uh, I'm really excited to do Irish work but I haven't done much. <laughs> have, you, have you researched any of your lines back yet? Well I've done a lot of my lines but my people both, mostly have been here since the 1600s. And oh that's early. I have not gotten over to Ireland or England uh, to uh, do any research. Well I think you ought to plan a special trip and uh, uh, just see how far you can get it back. Well I do too. I've been to Ireland and England but I sure like to go again. <laughs> where, do, where, in, where would you stay in Ireland? Oh gosh I don't know. I was in Dublin, and then I was in uh, over on the um, uh, Atlantic side, if, the if, and went down around. And the Clare and Galway. Yes, it's so just so picturesque. Yes, it is, and it's nice to find people anywhere I go that are at least familiar with it. It is. It's a lovely, lovely. Country. Well, thank you very much. Okay, thank you.
Oh, and how can they reach you if they want to reach the Johnson County uh, Genealogical Society? Well, they can reach me uh, at um, my email address, C-A-R-M-I-S-C-H, at juno.com. Or they can go to the Johnson County uh, Resource Library on eight, at 87th at Farley and go to the genealogy department, and they have lots of information on how to get hold of our society. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, o Olathe Public Library. Now, would you have any connection to any Irish names or things that might interest uh, my Irish audience? Well, I don't know if the Olathe Public Library itself does. I do. Oh, well, that's even better. <laughs> well, I have a Fitzgerald, Kelly, and O'Rourke ancestors in my line. But unfortunately, I don't know much about them. Well, I bet you Fitzgerald could go back to County Kerry. They were real big in County Kerry. Well, that might be. I, 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 maybe I should write that down. Got a book over there that I wrote a few years back. It's got all those names in it. You might find some clues. Well, that would be very helpful because I'm kind of stuck on the Fitzgeralds, so I'll keep that in mind. And here you are surrounded by every record in the world. Now, if only you didn't have to sit here at this table, you could get something done. <laughs> That's true. What am I thinking? Okay, well, the, the, uh, you're, you're also with the Olathe Public Library, but uh, those names were yours, so maybe somebody will hear. And uh, you know where they came from, any of these names in America? Livingston and LaSalle County, Illinois, uh, they were building canals there in the 1840s and 50s. And they, the Catholic Irish used to fight with the orange, the Protestant orange ones there. They had riots in the 1840s. Boy, isn't it nice that we put all that behind us? Yes, it would be, wouldn't it? <laughs> but I'm afraid I don't know of anything about them. I think they were very, very poor. Yeah, that's how most people started out when they came from Ireland, uh, and they worked their way up. And I can see you're now at the top. Oh, yes, I'm a librarian. <laughs> that sounds pretty important to me. That's what I always say. Well, thank you very much. You're welcome. Well, now we're here. I've just met a very tired but a very important person, and I, I begged her to come over here and just give us a few words. Could you tell us a little bit about this uh, this celebration here, this dedication and grand opening at the National Archives, and, and what role you played in it? Well, I am actually, uh, I'm Kimberly Reed. I am our uh, archives outreach marketing specialist, uh, and so my role is to basically make sure that um, we are fulfilling our mission by letting folks know that we are here, we exist, we want them to come see us, and by also coordinating our public programs, which this weekend essentially is. Uh, this weekend is our dedication open house weekend. We had our ribbon cutting on Friday, May 22nd. Today we're having the open house history and genealogy fair where we invite the public to come in, see us, see the galleries, shop in the gift shop, visit the research rooms, and also invited some of our uh, partner organizations from across the entire four-state region to come in and have tables and meet those same people so that they could have some visibility as well. Now, have you uh, uh, looked into any of your family history or you know what names are in your family line? Actually, I have. I've gone back about six or seven generations in my family on both sides. Um, so I'm, I'm pretty, I got as far back as I could go without hitting a, a brick wall. I think I finally hit the brick wall. What, what were some of the surnames? <laughs> oh, you would ask me that on the spot. Oh. Ah, um, we have Edwards. We have Metters. Um, we have a surname known as Reed that um, is a shortened German-Swiss surname uh, that once upon a time was known as Invicol Reed. Um, and we also have some prices and polling and Winslow. Boy, that's a pretty good uh, combination. And you remembered that many. Most people just remember one and say, I'd have to go back and look. Mm -hmm. Now, you also probably have the uh, great joy of dealing with all the political processes of establishing events and, and uh, organizations like this. How much of your energy is devoted to that side of the thing? Well, believe it or not, we have a good working relationship with most of our uh, congressional offices and our state uh, offices as well. So uh, 
in general terms, actually, things went pretty smooth for the opening weekend, have all along. Um, we have to give thanks to Senator Bond's office and to Congressman Cleaver's office for the opening um, and getting our building constructed and make, putting the addition on and doing the adaptive reuse rehabilitation. Uh, they were very helpful and supportive and um, we are most appreciative. We have great relationships with all of our uh, political offices. Well, what's next? Now that you, you're going to go home and you're going to take a week or two to relax from this, what, what, no, there'll be no relaxing well there. What do you do after this is over? What happens? Well, actually, we're not relaxing. This Thursday will be our first uh, public programming event. We will have Monroe Dodd in this Thursday night as an author, guest lecturer. He'll be doing a book signing on his recent publication. It was produced by Star Books, a division of the Kansas City Star. The book is titled Your Land, Our Land this Thursday, May 28th. So there is no stopping. We start right off in June with public programming. We have upcoming series of genealogy lectures and workshops. A um, list of events is available on our website as well as um, in-house here. We have calendars all around. Well, now I noticed you've got some nice red hair there. And let, oh, and look at those eyes. Now, they're not Irish? Would you say, what are they, Viking or Scandinavian? What would you say? Um, actually, no, there's some Irish back there. Ah, good. I knew it. I knew it. You can, you can swing good, too good with the punches here. You can just go, and you're such a good sport to give me these few minutes, even though you're totally exhausted. But uh, my compliments on a great event. Everybody seems to enjoy it, and uh, it's just nice, and it just seems very even, very level. Doesn't seem to be any great problems or crises that we see. I'm sure you might see a few. Uh, any uh, uh, words? We go out all across the world, of course, but mainly uh, North America, Australia, Britain. Any... Uh, uh, words you'd like to say to anybody out there well, in the audience? My last words would be, come see us. We're located at 400 West Pershing Road in Kansas City, Missouri, right next to Union Station. Come see us. And what, uh, uh, if they happen to be in town, where would they see you? At? What, what hours would be good to drop by? We are open Tuesday through Saturday, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. And would they all just knock at the door and ask for you? <laughs> they could do that, but just come on in and tour the galleries and see the gift shop and do your research and spend some time with us. Well, yeah, they got really a really nice, just beautiful areas to, and quiet areas to do research, and uh, you won't be interrupted and you won't be disappointed. So uh, my compliments to you and the staff and everybody that done it. It's a great job, and uh, uh, we'd all just like to say thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Kimberly. Well, that wraps up our road trip, and I'd just like to remember to say thank you to all of our members because without you, these podcasts would not be possible. And also, special thanks to uh, Kimberly Reed and uh, Jennifer Aldsley uh, for helping us set this up, and uh, they were sure helpful, and uh, many thanks to you. Well, remember to send your comments by clicking the contact link on our webpage at www.irishroots.com or send to the Irish Roots Cafe at our American address at Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave your message or report on things in your part of the world when you call my phone recorder at 816-256-3360. Skype me at Irish Roots Cafe. And uh, remember, members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way, a big thank you to all of our members. And away. Uh,